it's really important that women around the world show solidarity with other women. And as we know from the many reports of the violence that has, has occurred in the places that Turkey has already invaded in Afrin in 2018 with its proxies in Sirakanya and other places like that in the North uh, in 2019, uh, women are always the, the ones who are the, at the worst receiving end of the violence of these kinds of militias and this kind of aggression, uh, kidnappings, rapes, ransom, and, and of course murder, as well as the rest of the Kurdish population. It's incredibly important that women withdraw any kind of approval for this sort of violence. And so, um, this solidarity, women to women, I think is extremely important. And we hope that it will mobilize women's movements around the world to show their solidarity as well. I think anybody expects that the United Nations is going to send a peacekeeping force to the region. That certainly won't happen. However, the United Nations still is a very important moral authority. And, and, and their statements about the situation can impact other leaders. So, you know, we hope that they will begin at least by, by, by making a statement uh, opposing any further Turkish incursions. And ultimately, we would also hope that they would encourage world leaders to fully respect the rights of the Kurdish people. And that would mean you know, ending embargoes that affects Rojava. It would mean creating perhaps a no-fly zone over certain regions where Turkey is being uh, aggressive, northern Iraq, Rojava. Uh, certainly if world leaders, if somebody like Macron from France were to go meet with Erdogan with another five uh, major leaders of Western democracies and say no, you can't do this. You cannot sacrifice the, the lives of the Kurdish people, uh, you know, in this way. And we won't stand for it, and we won't exchange those lives for for your cooperation with Ukraine. Then he would have to stand down. So these leaders need to act morally to do the right thing, and they need to start putting the lives of the Kurdish people ahead of the profits that their arms trade and other economic trade uh, represent. So it's, it's time for them to take a moral stand and uh, stop putting the, the military profits that they make through arms sales uh, uh, over the lives of the Kurdish people. Freedom is absolutely essential to solving the problems in the, in the Middle East. He is the heart and spirit of the Kurdish people. He is the voice of the Kurdish people. He speaks for the Kurdish people. And really, no man can negotiate from being imprisoned. We saw that with Nelson Mandela. And indeed, Mr. Ejelan is the Mandela of the Kurdish people. I think it is essential for his message to be heard. I think that, that um, there is no more important time than now for his uh, freedom and also for the delisting of the PKK to become front and center priorities for movements of liberation all around the world. I have to say that it's been a remarkable journey to read the books of Ochilan and his ideas are really important and, and have, could have a profound impact on the future, not only of the Kurdish people, but really of the planet because of the aspects of social ecology, for example, that permeate his work. Um, as I said before, my father was very honored to be in correspondence with him. And I know that it brought him great joy coming, especially at the end of his life. For me, as beautiful it is to read about these ideas, it's even more extraordinary to see them put into practice. And so the weeks that I spent in Rojava were just extraordinary for me, as I mentioned before. I think that it's very important that we take these ideas and make sure that they live and breathe and continue to flourish. I, I wanna say, as I said earlier, before we began recording, 
I am absolutely in awe of the work that you do. After many decades as a journalist myself, I know that it can be hard. I know that it can be difficult to put the people in power on the spot and ask questions and report things like, for example, the report that you did about the two men who were thrown from the helicopter. But I've never had to risk going to prison for any of the work I've done. And you guys do that every single day. You take those risks. It's extraordinary that you do it. You are really my heroes. I really um, can't tell you how inspiring it is to, to read your work and to, and to know that every day in a way you are putting your lives on the line. I salute you and, and thank you for the honor of this interview. It's really, it's truly an honor and I'm really happy to get to know you and I hope we can stay in more contact in the future. Mm -hmm.